Angela every single day Do we think about talking to them when we walk away? What will they think? Will they make fun? Where will they go when the time on earth is done? We gotta be the salt, we gotta be the light We gotta get a left or we gotta get a right Trying to be sensitive has got us in a mess Put on your armor and take one in the chest If you want a bad fruit, oh I'm so excited. I can't wait. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you can't wait. I want to do this. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Jesus does in your life when you ask him to come into your heart, forgive you of your sins, so that you are now one of his children, when that happens, your life ought to be different. You ought to show the fruit of the Spirit, like love and joy and peace and long-suffering. All of these wonderful things Jesus wants us to have in our life are the fruit of the Spirit. Let's say that together to one more time. One, two, three. Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law.
We have been talking this week about the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, against such there is no law. But we've got a memory verse each night too, okay? And our memory verse tonight goes along with our fruit that we're going to talk about tonight. The first night we talked about love. Last night we talked about joy. Tonight we're going to talk about peace. The memory verse comes from Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. Colossians 3.15 simply says this. It says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Easy verse, okay? So I want us to say it together. I'll count the three, then let's do it all together, okay? Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. That's an awesome verse. And what it basically means is this. You know how a king sits on his throne and he rules over his kingdom. The Bible says that we should let the peace of God rule in our heart, in our kingdom. You know, sometimes we keep little pieces of our heart for ourselves. Now, I'm not talking about our blood pumping muscle. I'm talking about the heart of our life. What makes us us? We keep it for ourselves. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But when I'm around my friends, I'm still going to tell bad jokes. Or, when I'm around my friends, I'm still going to say some bad words. It makes me look cool. What we're really saying is, there's a part of the kingdom I'm keeping back for myself. I'm not letting that peace of God rule in my life. Remember, once we've experienced the love of God, and we begin to love others as He loved us, that'll give us joy. And when we get that joy, we have peace. But there can be no joy and there can be no peace if we're not letting God rule in our life, letting the peace of God rule in our life. So I ask you tonight, who's sitting on the throne room of your heart? You or God? Because there's never going to be any peace in your life until God has control. So let's say the verse again, okay? Here we go. Colossians 3.15. 1, 2, 3. Colossians 3.15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Cool verse. Hope you guys can learn it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Okay? Say it. Okay.
Hey, Dorito. Hey, what? Are you having a fun time so far? I'm having a blast. I'm enjoying all of this. It's the most fun you can have. I love it. I think it's wonderful. Don't you guys think it's wonderful? It's fantastic. It's awesome! <laughs> Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Cheryl again, and I'm here to go over the memory verse with you for tonight. Colossians 3.15. Brother Steve already did it with you. We're going to do it again. Can we see it up on the screen, Brother Steve? Let's say it together. One, two, three. Colossians 3.15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. So when I look at that verse, Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of God. Do you know what? I love a great big old piece of apple pie. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Maybe God's got a piece of apple pie for me. Do you think that's what that's saying? I don't think so, Miss Cheryl. Well, it says let the peace of God, so I figure he makes apple trees. I can have an apple. And that piece is spelled P-I-E-C-E. -E. Oh, it's a different one. And Let's look at it again. P-E-A-C-E. <laughs> oh, silly me. Silly me. And let the peace of God, that means let the calmness of God rule in your hearts. Because you know what, boys and girls? God made everything there is. Everything. The trees, the flowers, the bees, the rain, the storms, the snow, your big toe. God made it all. And if God can make all of that, then I can allow his peace to live in me. Let's say that verse again. One, two, three. Colossians 3, 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And now, Brother Steve, you think I can have a piece of that apple pie? Have we got apple pie? We do? Yeah. We'll be back, boys and girls. Well, hi, boys and girls. I am sitting here today with my buddy Quackers. Can you say hi, Quackers? Hi, Quackers. <laughs> no, I meant, can you say hi, Quack? Never mind, okay? I do. Have you seen it? I know. I, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Um, we are here this week, and we are talking about the fruits of <coughs> the Spirit. Okay? Like love, joy, peace, grapes. No, not grapes. Grapes are not part of the fruit of the Spirit. They don't like them? No, no. They're not part of the fruits of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, love, suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Well, what's up with grapes? <laughs> Nothing's up with grapes. They're just not part of the fruit of the Spirit. They're, they're fruit of the trees and vines. They're not part of the fruit of the Spirit. I don't get it. <laughs> okay. Um, the fruit of the Spirit is what comes from Jesus Christ living in our life. Grapes are what grow in a grapevine. And I don't like them. <laughs> I know you like them. And I know you want to get some. You got any grapes? No, I don't have any grapes, okay? Uh, but we are talking about the fruit of the Spirit what the fruit of the Spirit can do in our life. And the fruit of the Spirit can give us a wonderful, joyful, peaceful, happy life. Grapes do the same thing for me. I, I know, I'm, I'm pretty sure we've, we've gotten that in all the things that you've talked about during the springtime and the summer. You have? Yep. I have met very few kids anywhere who don't look at me and say, wait, wait, wait. Got any grapes? I'm an influencer. <laughs> yes, you are, Quackers. I'm not sure it's a good influence. They like grapes. <laughs> you know, what's wrong with grapes? Well, nothing's wrong with grapes. It's just that uh, people keep inter 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 interrupting me when I'm trying to get grapes. Would you stop? Just like that, I'm trying to tell the story, and someone event eventually comes up and says, Got any grapes? What? Stop it! We're not talking about grapes. I am. <laughs> I know you are. We're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Okay? And the fruit of the Spirit is evident in our life when we yield our life to Jesus Christ and we let Him grow in us. And then comes that love and that joy and that peace and those grapes. No! <laughs> they don't come as part of the fruit of the Spirit. They don't? Well, no, not, not really. How do you get communion? <laughs> Would you stop? 
that's grape juice, okay? That's a whole nother thing now, okay? We're talking about the fruits of the spirits. Can I ask one thing before we go? I guess. What are you gonna ask? I mean grapes. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> yes, let's go get some grapes. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Ha <laughs> ha dog, we're going to get grapes. We're going to get grapes! lesson tonight. I've asked Miss Cheryl to join me in getting the lesson across tonight because she's going to help me out. Now our verse tonight, once again, comes from Colossians chapter 3 and in verse 15. And the Bible says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you're called in one body, and be thankful. Now that's the entire verse. We're only using the very first part of it. Let me read the whole verse again. The Bible says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you are called in one body, and be thankful. Okay? Now, as Christians, we all make up part of the body of Christ. Some are the hands, some are the legs, some are the feet, some are the eyes. The Bible says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. It also says, let it rule in your hearts as you're called in one body. Let the peace of God rule in the church as well. We're all part of the body of believers, and we shouldn't be fighting with each other at church. That's the last place people ought to see us fighting with one another. Oh, we ought to get along with one another. The Bible says we're to be at peace uh, with all men, especially those who are in the household of faith. We're to treat each other kindly, okay? But what we're going to talk about today is the fruit of the Spirit, peace. In order for us to talk about that, I've got a box here, okay? It's an empty box. Stick your hand there, Miss Cheryl. Show them that it's an empty box. It's empty. Okay? All right? But here's what we're going to do. We're going to open it up and take out one thing, okay? We'll get back to the rest of them in a minute. Okay? And that one thing is a clown. Okay? If we're going to have joy in our life, if we're going to have fun, if we're going to enjoy this Christian life, then it's going to come about, first of all, as we said, by making sure that we have accepted God's love and that we love Him, and that will give us joy, and that joy will lead to peace. The only way we're ever going to have that peace of God and let it rule in our hearts 
is to know the joy of God in our life if we haven't trusted Him as our personal Savior. And I, every time I look at a clown, I laugh. Some people are scared of clowns. I'm not afraid of clowns. They make me laugh. They do funny, funny things. And so we have to have that joy, and that joy comes from knowing Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and letting Him live through us. Okay? But that's not all. It's empty. I don't think so, Ms. Cheryl. I believe there's more. Okay? There's always more. There's always more. What's we'll get back to those in a minute, okay? That is a strong man. Okay? Now, if we're going to have joy, we're going to have to know the strength of God. Remember, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Okay? The joy of the Lord is our strength. It takes the love and the joy in order for us to get to the peace. We find strength. We find joy. We allowing the fruits of the Spirit to grow in us. And anytime I look at a strong man, I think to myself, that's what I look like. Nobody else can see it. Well, maybe. No. no. Anyhow. I got muscles. Yeah, I do too. I just keep them hidden. I don't want anybody to be jealous. Okay? But, with that joy comes strength. Okay? But that's not all. There's Even though, Miss Cheryl, what? there's nothing else in there. It's still empty. There's nothing in there, boys and girls. <laughs> but there is. And that's this. Beautiful ballerina. You see the, the love, the joy, the strength brings about the grace and the peace. Anytime I see a ballerina and the way they move, there's such a grace and such a peacefulness about how they move. It just absolutely amazes me. I've tried walking on my toes, uh, and, uh, well, let's just say it's not good when you break a toe. That's all I'm going to say, okay? Um, I can't do it, but I watch them do it, and it's so beautiful, it's so graceful, it's so peaceful to watch how they do that. They can take a story that's, to me, just ah, supposed to be a bad story, you know, and they're fighting against this, that, but they're doing it like a ballerina, and it's just like, oh, that's so cool. I like that. Oh, cool. They make it look way too peaceful. It doesn't look like a battle anymore. It looks graceful and peaceful. You see, when the fruit of the Spirit rules in our life, when we yield ourselves to God, love, joy, strength grow, grace and the peace grow. That's amazing. Because that brings us to one last thing, Miss Cheryl. There's more. There's more. But it's empty, brother. Stick your inside there, Miss Cheryl. What do you see? It's empty. It's empty. No. There's still one more. I hope it's a beautiful ballerina again. No, this time it's a monkey. A monkey. Yeah, it's a funny monkey. You know what, guys? When it comes to the fruit of the Spirit, the very first step is inviting Jesus Christ into your life. You're never going to know love. You're never going to know joy. You're never going to know peace. We have been through a crazy, crazy year so far. But who knows what the rest of this year is going to bring about. If you'd have told Cheryl and I back in January, hey, before this year's out, there's going to be riots all over the United States. There's going to be a virus. People are going to die. You're not going to be able to travel for at least three, maybe four months. We looked at you and said, not in America. What, what are you on? Mm -hmm. Okay? And yet here we are. It's just the first of June, and we've had a virus. We've had people die. We've had riots. We've had chaos. We've had cities shut down. Things burn. But you know what? For the child of God who has invited the Christ into their life, there's love. There's joy. There's strength. There's peace. And if you want to know that peace in your life, or that joy, or that love, if you want to know that strength to be able to say, hey, I'm not worried about any of this, I'm okay, then you ought not monkey around with a decision to invite Jesus into your life. Because I want you to know something. The Christian life is very appealing. And once you've invited him in, you'll understand exactly what we're talking about. It's very simple. All you have to do is say, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Save me. And give me a home in heaven. The Bible says if you'll do that and you mean it, you're really asking him to forgive you of your sins, the things that separate you from God, 
you're asking him to forgive you, and you truly mean that, and you want to live for him, that he'll do just that. And he'll give you a home in heaven. And that will be a decision. You didn't monkey around with it. It's a decision that you make. Put that right back in there, Michelle. You see, when we don't monkey around with it, when we decide that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to put God first, and I'm going to live for Him. <laughs> well, guess what? The Bible says He takes our sin. He removes it as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. He forgives us, and He gives us that love and that joy and that peace as we allow Him to lead and guide and direct our steps. I encourage you, talk to your mom and dad there at home. Call your preacher, your children's pastor, talk to them. Say, I want to know how to have this peace in my life. Can you give me some pointers? Can you show me what the Bible says? If need be, contact us. We'd love to talk to you and tell you more about this peace that can rule in your heart and in your life. It's the greatest peace you'll ever know. Is he your Savior? Let's say it together. One, two, three. Colossians 3, 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. So let's say the verse again, okay? Here we go. Colossians 3, 15. One, two, three. Colossians 3, 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Cool verse. Hope you guys can learn it. Okay, boys and girls, we're down to the end of our program tonight. But we've still got something else to do. It's the 20-second challenge. And this comes from our memory verse for the week, Galatians 5, 22 through 23. If you're able to memorize that, you should be able to say it in about 20 seconds. Let's say it together. You can read the monitor if you need to, or if you think you know it in your head, say it without looking. Ready? One, two, three. Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law.